This is Late Edition News at 10 with Ann Gownley. Sports with Eric DiBerardinis. And meteorologist Joe Garbacek. Drugs and guns off the streets of Greater Hazleton. More on that bust and arrest in Butler Township. Later, a local police officer finds himself on the other side of the law. But first, a man commits two crimes at one time, leaving one person with some serious injuries tonight. We'll have more on all those stories coming up on WYLN's Late Edition. Good evening. It is Monday, October 20th, 2014. I'm Kristen Bazinski in for Ann Gownley. Well, the search is on tonight for the man who first committed a burglary and then ran over a pedestrian while trying to flee capture. Here's what Hazleton police tell us happened. An elderly man was caught burglarizing a storage unit near the KFC on Broad Street in the city. The man then tried to flee the area and that that's when he ran over a man walking nearby. Now the elderly man kept driving and police tonight are searching for the white van he used to get away. The man who was hit was flown to a trauma center. Police say his injuries were severe. If you know anything about this burglary turned hit and run, dial 911 immediately. Butler Township Police landed a large amount of heroin and guns stemming from a call to a reported fight. Officers were sent to 417 South Hunter Highway Thursday morning. The landlord of the place tells us 20, told police 25-year-old Alex Albert Victoriano confronted him and allegedly pulled out a handgun. 23-year-old Jonathan Vega, who lives at that address with Victoriano, managed to get away get the gun away from him, who then grabbed a machete and continued to threaten the landlord, Rishi Rakshapol. Police detained Victoriano and found that Vega was concealing a duffel bag which contained around 230 packets of heroin and numerous firearms, and he was also then cuffed. He was charged with possessing firearms with the serial number altered, firearms not to be carried without a license and possession with intent to deliver. Victoriano was charged with a felony count of firearms not to be carried without a license, terroristic threats, and simple assault. Both men are locked up tonight in the county prison. Staying in Butler Township, police there arrested a Carbondale woman in connection with a stolen vehicle that was recovered at the Econo Lodge on North Hunter Highway. Police say 25-year-old Stephanie Ware is accused of driving the stolen Ford Explorer and parking it in the Econo Lodge parking lot on September 23rd. Ware told police told to was told to leave the car there by Lee Sokolowski. He is a suspect in a number of bank robberies and stolen vehicles in the area. Ware was told to wipe the car down to destroy any evidence where has been charged with receiving stolen property and criminal conspiracy along with other charges she was arraigned on those charges and sent to the luzerne county prison in lieu of two hundred and fifty thousand dollars bail a Plymouth man learned his fate today for his involvement in a fatal road rage incident. 23-year-old Lorenzo Burgos struck and killed Fred Kleeman, who had yelled at him to slow down last August on Nottingham Street in Plymouth. Burgos told police that he hit the gas towards Kleeman, but intended to come to a quick stop. He pled guilty to a third-degree murder charge and to two counts of reckless endangerment. Luzerne County Judge Tina Polichek gartley sentenced him to 10 to 20 years in prison. A lawsuit was filed in federal court last month concerning the purchase of the Huber Breaker. Revia Ashley LLC is accusing Pacello Logistics LLC of stealing money and scrap metal from the site. Revia Ashley is asking for an injunction to stop Pacella Logistics from taking anything else from the Huber Breaker. It also wants documentation of all property removed from the site. The company is also seeking $150,000 plus fees and costs. Pacello and Revia Ashley forged a loan agreement in May of 2013. Pacello bought the property at bankruptcy court in October of 2013. Revia Ashley put up $1.2 million to Pacello to complete 
complete the purchase. Now, if no settlement is reached between the two companies, a trial is scheduled for July 20th in federal court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. Shots rang out in Wilkes-Barre over the weekend, and a New York man was arrested by city police. Officers say they were called to a report of shots fired around 6.30 Sunday night. A victim told officers that he was driving his vehicle and was, quote, flipped off by two black males. A male suspect wearing a green hoodie reached into the waistband of the other suspect and pulled out a handgun. He then fired three shots at the victim. Both men then fled on foot on Howard Street. Police Police were able to track down and catch 21-year-old Sake Hardy from White Plains, New York, and they took him into custody. And the search continues tonight for accused cop killer Eric Freen. And we have learned that just about an hour ago, police may have spotted the area's most wanted man near a Poconos post office. This comes just a few days after authorities refocused their search efforts in the manhunt after a credible sighting. Friday night, a woman claimed that she saw a man carrying a rifle with mud on his face near Pocono Mountain East High School. The school sits close to the Swiftwater State Police Barracks. The Friday sighting moved the search southbound and into the Swiftwater area, Paradise, and Pocono Townships. Now, the Pocono Mountain School District canceled all activities at its Swiftwater campus on Sunday. Earlier tonight, a local police officer reported a possible Freen sighting near the Swiftwater post office. However, Freen was not located. Also, blood found last week on a resident's porch was tested and came back not. Greens. A Kingston police officer was charged today with driving under the influence. Officer John Sosnowski and Officer Jonathan Karaniski crashed their ATVs around in the early morning of September 29th in Edwardsville. Karanski was transported to Geisinger Valley Medical Center in Plains Township after his vehicle slammed into a tree. Sosnowski of Ashley appeared to be under the influence and was taken into custody. He was also treated at Geisinger Wyoming Valley Medical Center and then released. He's been charged with a DUI, driving at an unsafe speed, and operating an ATV on the street. A Pennsylvania Supreme Court justice was relieved of his duties. Justice Seamus McCaffrey was relieved on an interim basis of all judicial and administrative responsibilities as a justice. McCaffrey has publicly accepted responsibility for exchanging hundreds of sexually explicit emails with a member of the Attorney General's office. According to a news relief, release, the Judicial Conduct Board will determine if Justice McCaffrey will be removed from the bench. Some good news for motorists who travel Interstate 81 in Schuylkill County. Interstate 81 North from the Delano exit to the McAdoo exit is now open to all traffic. The northbound lanes were open after a year of construction on the bridges that carry Interstate 81 over railroad tracks and over past above the road. This project is part of multi, a multi-year project to replace or rehab bridges on the interstate off and on ramps along with repaving the interstate. No word when the McAdoo exit will completely reopen. Creatures, great and small, paid a visit to a group of students in West Hazleton. WYLN's Julie Stefanovich took a trip to the rainforest with the kiddos today. Students at West Hazleton Elementary School got a visit today from some unique and exotic creatures. Although there were no wildcats on hand, children got the chance to come face to face with a variety of mammals, birds, and reptiles. Understanding Wildlife, which is based out of Ohio, rode into town to present live on stage the rainforest. The mission of the organization is to inspire children to care for the environment. The company travels coast to coast with its message of conservation. And we've got, again, we've got birds, snakes, monkeys, lemurs, alligators, kinkajous. We, we do a fun program. Students love our program, man, and it's so rewarding to us. Back home at the office, we've gotten calls from principals and teachers that will say it's been six weeks since your program was at our school, and the kids are still talking about it like it was yesterday. And, and that's exciting to us because that's our goal. We want the kids to have fun. We want them to realize these animals have personalities. These animals are awesome. And when they get that 
that emotional connection. Now they've got a reason. We tell the kids to recycle. We tell the kids to take care of the environment, but oftentimes they don't know why. And, and, and once they see these animals, they meet these animals, things change a little bit and the kids really do get excited about getting involved in conservation issues. Principal Pulaski was thrilled to have the organization visit the school. The kids gain a better understanding of the importance of preserving the environment by seeing the animals up close and personal. A lot of them don't get the opportunities to get to see these animals, especially relating to the rainforest. It's really exciting to bring all these outside people into our school to help our students become all around great students. Not just the academics, the social, but to learn about their environment and how they can help to save a lot of these animals and participate. According to Cole Reiser, elementary age is the perfect time to start implementing rainforest conservation. He hopes that the students got a better understanding on how to take care of the environment from today's presentation. In West Hazleton, Ford W. Wyland's Lit Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Julie, thank you so much. Well, Sunday was all about food, food, and more food at the Health and Wellness Center in Hazel Township. Our Gary Perna has a recap of the tasty event, just in case you missed it. The 7th Annual Tastes of Greater Hazelton was held this Sunday at the Health and Wellness Center in Hazel Township. There was something for everyone to taste from small finger foods to hoagies and much more. Organizers said all 350 tickets were sold for this event. Many restaurants returned, but there were a few new ones trying it out at the Tastes of Greater Hazelton. We have, we have a lot of different restaurants here. We have restaurants that have been here for seven years, that have uh, come here for seven years. We also have brand new restaurants that joined us this year. Um, uh, this year we have our new restaurants are uh, Theodora's, The Pines, Victoria's, um, Martin's, La Mexicana, and De Pisa. According to Barna, the restaurants bring their signature dishes to the event. Well, all the different restaurants, they have their signature, whatever their signature food is, is what they're bringing here today for us to try. And we would hope that all, these, the, all the people that are attending today will at least participate and go to these different restaurants and uh, patronize them throughout the year. We spoke with two general managers about why they brought their businesses to this event. This is our second year here at the Taste of Greater Hazelton, and uh, we're doing it to showcase, of course, what we have at Giant Foods to offer, but it's also a great way to uh, mingle with the community and with the other businesses here in Hazelton. Uh, we do enjoy it very much, meeting the people, and uh, today we are offering one of our specialties, which is our six-foot hoagies, and they are made to order at Giant Foods for any uh, celebration, holidays, get-togethers, and we're offer also offering offering a uh, taste of our marinated boneless uh, th chicken thighs and we have different flavors that we prepare in-house uh, are there for you to purchase. We, this is our first time here. We just opened in May and we are very excited to be here, very excited to show our signature pieces and show everyone what we have to offer. We have our infamous Chef Drew's New England clam chowder, uh, pulled, pulled pork sandwiches and uh, cheesesteak spring rolls. We're very excited to see what we have to offer. They're loving the food and they're loving seeing Chef Drew. Our Mike Lula talked with two people who came out to the Tastes of Greater Hazelton and why they keep coming for that great tasting food. Um, this is probably either my fifth or sixth year that I've been coming. Um, I love every year. I look forward to it. And I introduced my husband to it last year, and now he loves it too. Uh, what are some of the things that you come down and come to a place like this, some of the places you try, after you try some place, have you visited the restaurant? Oh yes, last year we went to the Brass Buckle um, after we saw them here and um, we loved uh, Martin's this year, can't wait to go to their restaurant now after seeing them here this year. Well, the Brass Buckle I liked, I liked uh, the Swedish meatballs from uh, Sand Springs was really good um, and the uh, fajita roll. Uh, where we're in that place, well, was good too. You said it's your second time here. Would you recommend it to anybody else? Uh, yeah, I try to get my parents to come. I try to get my friends to come, but they live probably far away. But yes, I would recommend it to whoever is in the area. Barnes said all the funds raised at the Taste of Greater Hazelton benefit community programs that the Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce put on each and every year. In Hazel Township, for WILN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna. All right, thanks, Gary. Now I'm starving even more than I was before.
All right, moving on tonight, an airbag recall has been issued by safety regulators, and it could affect millions of drivers. There have been reports of airbags exploding and spraying shrapnel and metal. Toyota, Honda, Mazda, BMW, Nissan, General Motors, Ford, Mitsubishi, and Subaru, all among the manufacturers said to be affected. The cars were made with Takeda or Takata airbags. Owners can visit safercar.gov to find out if their vehicle is on the list. Officials with Mahanoy City have announced that street sweeping will be taking place this week and parking restrictions will be enforced. Cars must be moved Tuesday, October 21st on the south side of Center Street, Wednesday, October 22nd on the north side of Center Street, and then on Thursday, the 23rd, both sides of Main Street. The ban will be in effect from 7 a.m. until 3 p.m. All right, we will recap our top stories coming up a little bit later, but right now we need to head outside where it's a bit chilly up here in the greater Hazleton area. I mean, it's chilly in the Lehigh Valley, but it's really chilly up here when I got here tonight. And the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center is where our Joe G is right now with a preview of the forecast that he has coming up. Joe, any warmer conditions in the forecast? And please say no rain. I could say no rain, but if I do that, I would be telling a lie. Don't want to do that. Yes, we have some rain to talk about in our forecast, some showers to contend with. We had a couple of showers and sprinkles across parts of our viewing area today. Here's a look at the radar. Over the uh, past six hours, well, we stopped it at 5 o'clock to show you that, a little bit of that rain out there in uh, Williamsport and out in Lycoming County, and eventually it spread it toward the east a little bit, but for the most part, most of our area did not see any rainfall. Some areas did see a few sprinkles and a few scattered showers, but we do have some more showers to talk about in our forecast, especially as we head into tomorrow, and as always, we thank the Covered Wagon for supplying us with these wonderful fall decorations that you see behind me. Be sure to check out their location down there in Cybertsville. Seven day forecast coming up next. Mom always wanted to choose the best for us. She wanted us to be safe and happy even when she wasn't around. When the time came for us to make the best choice for her, we could have picked a place closer to us, but this isn't about our convenience. It's about the kind of care mom is going to receive when we aren't around. It's about closing my eyes at night and knowing she is happy and safe. We wanted the best for mom, so we chose Heritage Hill. Welcome to Fairway Chevrolet, Pennsylvania's number one truck dealer. From the longest lasting, most dependable full-size pickup, the tough all new Silverado to the rugged 3500 Chevy dump truck, Fairway has your truck. Express cargo van, 2500 utility, 3500 cube, 3500 cube utility with service body or will upfit any body style to meet your needs. Sales, service or parts, make no mistake about it, Fairway Chevrolet is Pennsylvania's number one truck dealer. Hazelton Eye Specialist welcomes Dr. James Diem to their practice. Dr. Diem specializes in comprehensive eye care from birth to all ages, specializing in hard-to-fit contact lenses, vision rehabilitation due to head trauma and stroke, now accepting new patients. Don't give up. Call Dr. Diem and let him help you on your journey to better vision today. Are you having a party? Choose Catering by Whitetail for your next event. They offer on-site and off-site catering for all occasions, barbecues, picnics, corporate functions, reunions, friendly get-togethers, graduation parties, any event you're hosting. Chef Tom will prepare the best for your guests. Call Chef Tom at 570-384-2314. Carryout catering is also available. Choose Catering by Whitetail for your next event. It's high school football time. Watch WILN for all the local high school football action as we bring you the event, not just the highlights, like only WILN can. Watch the game of the week right here on WILN. We're your local network. For the best in local sports, watch WILN TV 35. The event, not just the highlights. A couple of showers and sprinkles across carts of our viewing area today. Every location did not see it, but 
You know what, definitely was a, a cool start to our morning. Uh, a cool day today, but we did see a little bit of some sunshine mixed with some clouds. But tomorrow, we have some more rain that will be heading in our direction, some more showers overspreading our area. And even we keep a threat of a couple of more showers for a couple of those days that follow. So we definitely did see a uh, good soaking rain. Uh, the last time, remember, we're picking up almost five inches of rain, a couple of more scattered showers here and there, and a chance of some showers for tomorrow, and even some showers out there, Live 35 Skycast uh, Doppler. And again, a few scattered showers, lone showers and sprinkles, but again, they're not really amounting to a whole lot. But temperature-wise, it's cool out there, 49 degrees to be exact. And there you can see the winds averaging anywhere between 5 to 10 miles per hour. So this morning's low temperatures bottoming out again right at the uh, freezing point. A few areas even slightly below freezing. Definitely a chilly start to our morning. And look at these daytime highs. Only in the 50s in most areas. Definitely a chill in the air. Again, we got some more showers out there as you go out toward the west and out in the Ohio Valley region. Those continue to spread toward the east, and we'll have to deal with some of those showers as we progress through tomorrow. You can see the greens definitely showing up across our area. Uh, maybe a, a few more scattered showers even as we go into the daytime hours of our Wednesday. And possibly even in the Thursday, may have to deal with a shower or two around or a couple of sprinkles. Still a little bit unstable as we progress through this week. But notice these numbers tonight. Again, a lot of clouds around. Temperatures stay on a little bit milder side. We'll be only dropping down into the 40s. Definitely a cool one as we head into tomorrow and going into our Wednesday. Notice the noontime hour temperatures generally up into uh, the 50s. So we got this area of low pressure counterclockwise spin heading in our region for tomorrow, triggering a couple of those showers across our area. And again, a couple of scattered ones for at least the two days that follow tomorrow, that being Wednesday and Thursday. But you see those temperatures? Uh, it's going to be cool. We may not get out of the 40s even as we go into our Wednesday and Thursday. But then by Friday, Saturday, looking much nicer, a mix of clouds and sunshine temperatures in the upper 50s and temperatures near 60 as we go into Sunday and Monday of next week. And as always, we thank the Pines for sponsoring our seven-day extended forecast. Make sure you check out their location on Broad Street. They have a great menu and a lot of great food. Well, another place we want to thank this time for sponsoring our evening Pennsylvania lottery numbers, that being simply home brew. Now's the time to start making your holiday wines. You can even do it at their location. Great for holiday gifts. Be sure to give them a call and check out their location. The daily number, 250, the big four, 6128. The quinto numbers, 03334. And the cash five, 3627, 32, and 42. More late edition, including sports, with Eric the Bear Odinas coming up after the break. Hey football fans, do you score field goals or do you score touchdowns? Do you settle for the extra point or do you go for two? At Burger Family Dealerships on Route 93, we have the winning combination and you'll score more with us. Stop in and check out their touchdown deals. Come in, score big, and win. Burger Family Dealerships, Route 93, near the Laurel Mall, your championship auto dealer. A winning smile. It's not the secret to success, but it sure helps. Protect your smile by visiting Dr. Weiss for complete dental services. Dr. Weiss offers a full-service denture laboratory on premises, offering dentures in one day. Three dentists, four hygienists, and a team of caring technicians and assistants specializing in quality dentures and repairs, complete general dentistry, extractions, cleaning, and caps. Dr. Weiss, where you can have new dentures in one day. This is a home. 
This is your neighbor's home. This is another home furnished by Grand Central. All these rooms in all these homes makes everybody so happy. It's so easy to do. It's your room made your way. It's local. It's Grand Central. This week at Grand Central, the price on the floor is the price to your door. And not one cent more. No tax, no delivery, no kidding. It's now floor-to-door prices. Everybody shops Grand Central, making your house a home. All you want to do is wrap up uh, a sandwich or leftovers, uh, but dealing with plastic wrap and foil uh, leaves you in a tangled uh, mess. Hi, Mark Hill here for Raptastic, the super smart dispenser that lets you pull, press, and wrap just like that. Simply load in your wrap and you're ready to roll. Plastic wrap, foil wrap, wax paper, and more. Raptastic cuts perfectly every time, so there's no waste. Raptastic has a safer hidden stainless steel cutter that cuts only the wrap and only when you need it to. Ready to change rolls? It's spring loaded, so it's easy out and easy in. Raptastic is dishwasher safe and fits right in the drawer. Put Raptastic to work in your home today for just $10.99. Call right now and we'll send you a second Raptastic as a bonus. Just pay separate processing and handling. As a special gift, I'm going to fill your Raptastics with a roll of foil and a roll of plastic absolutely free. You get two Raptastics, two rolls of wrap, a huge value for just $10.99. Here's how to order. We build tires but not tires like anybody else. We build Cooper tires for people, not just cars. People who are chauffeurs and shuttle pilots, heavy haulers and heavy hitters. More than what your Cooper tires can do, it's about what you can do with your Cooper tires. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Just two Fridays remain in the high school football regular season, but before we look ahead to week nine, we look back at week eight across the area, starting with the number one team in our power rankings, Crestwood. Both squads fired up. Dallas enters on a two-game losing streak. Crestwood unbeaten and haven't been remotely close to defeat. They also haven't trailed on the scoreboard all season, but the Mountaineers' Justin Muka with the interception off the deflection, and he manages to return it all the way down inside the 10-yard line. Crestwood defense holds and forces Dallas to attempt the field goal, which goes through, putting the Comets at a deficit for the first time this year. They strike back, but again, Dallas threatening. Third and goal, but sophomore Lance blasts with a huge interception in the end zone. Dominating effort from there on out. 427 total rushing yards for the Comets. Frank Eigeldinger, 10 carries, 178 yards, and two touchdowns. More on him later. But also a career night from junior Tanner Kalu. As we speed things up, Kalu needs just seven carries to gain 189 yards and three touchdowns, making easy work of the Dallas defense, all on his dad's 50th birthday. I guess that's his birthday present, you know? So, did you get him anything else? <laughs> nah, man. I mean, tomorrow I'll give him something. Crestwood head coach Greg Myers talks after the 49-10 win. Experienced, focused group of kids right now. And, you know, we talked about it all, all offseason. Uh, we talked about it all week, taking one game at a time. And that's exactly what they're doing. You know, they're focused and uh, they have some goals in, in, in mind and uh, nothing's going to uh, keep them from reaching the goals. On to Wyoming Valley West versus Hazleton in WYLN's Game of the Week. Cougars get on the board first after the tremendous agility of Zach Zakoski. The senior running back with 90 yards on 19 carries and this touchdown. Spartans tie it up and then go ahead on this gift. Ryan Heller thinks about the move before he makes the catch, and Jermichael Bunch gets an easy touchdown, prances into the end zone, 14-7 Spartans. Next possession, Brady Davison finds a wide open LJ Wisniewski to make it a two-touchdown advantage. Davison with 349 yards and four touchdowns on the night. Cougars with a little luck coming up as the Spartans can't handle the snap on the punt. They retreat and make matters worse. Fumble it in their own end zone. Hazleton recovers for the score. But less than 30 seconds to go in the half and a deflating touchdown throw from Davison to Jermichael Bunch. Valley West cruises in the second half on their way to a 56-20 win. 
in a battle of Anthracite League unbeatens, North Schuylkill makes a big statement with a 43-0 victory over Jim Thorpe. For highlights from that game, check out our Facebook page, WILN Press Box. Scores from other matchups. Blue Mountain gets their fourth consecutive victory. The Eagles... Sean Greenwald and Adam Hall hooked up for two touchdowns through the air, while the defense forced three turnovers and held Tamakwa's Colin Moyer to 62 yards on 23 carries. The Hanover Hawkeyes cruise to a shutout victory and rack up 509 yards of total offense while holding the Panthers to just 16 yards all night. Lee Height moves up to second in the Anthracite League. Wyatt Clements picks up 181 yards and two touchdowns. With playoff hopes intact, the Indians face Tamaqua and Jim Thorpe the next two weeks. For the second straight week, Mahanoy surrenders a two-touchdown advantage. Marion Catholic's K.J. Snur started the comeback with a 91-yard kick return TD, then a rushing sc score. Snur suffered an injury in the fourth, but defensive stud Nick Sully stepped in and punched in the game-winning touchdown. The Colts are in good position for the playoffs, while the Golden Bears' chances are dwindling. Schuylkill Haven's William Casella goes over 1,000 yards for the year and tallies three touchdowns, making it 68 for his career as the Hurricanes roll over the Miners. The first play from scrimmage in the Wyoming Valley Conference game between Coughlin and Wyoming area predicated the entire night. The Crusaders' Jacob Soler completed a 59-yard pass down to the two, which led to a quick score. Coughlin had only three minutes and 30 seconds of possession in the first half, but still led 28-7 heading into halftime. This Friday, Coughlin is featured against Berwick in WYLN's Game of the Week. Those Bulldogs shut out Pittston but led just 8 to nothing at halftime. Big night from Nick Talenka, who rushed for 176 yards and four touchdowns, while the defense contained Kyle Gattuso to just 71 yards. Another big night for Brian Boschman of Tonkanic, but the Tigers struggle in the second half again and remain winless. Later in sports, plays of the week and the Steelers on Monday Night Football. But next, Kristen will have a recap of today's news. Tri-County Business Machines has been serving the Hazleton area with office supplies and furniture for over 35 years. We are your local Kyocera dealer for all your digital Kyocera copiers, printers, and faxes. For exceptional reliability, sales, and service, the call to make is to Tri-County Business Machines. Tri-County Business Machines, keeping your office up to speed. Tri-County Business Machines, located at 117 East Broad Street, Hazleton. Phone 459-0754 or visit us on the web at tricountybm.com. Luncheonette, still making memories after all these years. Lewis and Freeman Real Estate Drum Sales Team is proud to be the top selling office in the greater Hazleton area and part of the leading firm in Luzerne County. As members of the leading real estate companies of the world, the buyers and sellers can count on exceptional service and national strength. Known for their cutting edge marketing, user friendly website, and customer oriented tools such as LF Home Finder, Lewis and Freeman brings buyers and sellers together. Call today. The Lewis and Freeman Drum Sales Professionals are committed to be your real estate source. Welcome to Fairway Chevrolet, Pennsylvania's number one truck dealer. From the longest lasting, most dependable full-size pickup, the tough all new Silverado to the rugged 3500 Chevy dump truck, Fairway has your truck. Purchase any new Silverado, Tahoe or Suburban from Fairway Chevrolet during the month of October and receive a $400 grocery gift card from our friends at Gould SureSave in Cunningham.
And welcome back to WYLN's Late Edition. We do have uh, some breaking news coming into our newsroom tonight. Um, we're learning that Hazleton police, along with uh, police officers from West Hazleton Borough, uh, were all called to 684 North James Street. We're being told that a, a male uh, was robbed at gunpoint. He was inside his car at the time. Uh, we're told that he was a worker for domestic relations. His domestic relations badge and his own firearm arm stolen in that robbery. Uh, the suspect is a black male wearing a white shirt, also a second black male with him uh, wearing a dark blue or black hoodie. Both those men fled on foot and are suspects in this crime. Again, West Hazleton Police canvassing the area along with Hazleton City Police. That is at 684 North James Street. We will continue to keep you updated as information becomes available to us. Well, the search is on tonight for the man who first committed a burglary and then ran over a pedestrian while trying to flee capture. Here's what Hazleton City Police tell us happened earlier tonight. An elderly the man was actually caught burglarizing a storage unit near the KFC on Broad Street in the city. The man then tried to flee the area and that's when he ran over a man walking nearby. The elderly man kept driving and police tonight are searching for the white van he used to get away. The man who was hit was flown to a trauma center. Police say his injuries were severe. If you know anything about this burglary turned hit and run, dial 911 immediately. Butler Township Police landed a large amount of heroin and guns stemming from a call to a reported fight. Officers were sent to 417 South Hunter Highway Thursday morning. The landlord of the place said 25-year-old Alex Albert Victoriano confronted him and allegedly pulled out a handgun. 23-year-old Jonathan Vega, who lives at that address with Victoriano, managed to get the gun away from him, then grabbed a machete and continued to threaten the landlord, Rishi Rakshapol. Police detained Victoriano and found that Vega was concealing a duffel bag which contained around 230 packets of heroin and numerous firearms, and he was also cuffed. He was charged with possessing firearms with a serial number altered, firearms not to be carried without a license, and possession with intent to deliver. Victoriano was charged with a felony count of firearms not to be carried without a license, terroristic threats, and simple assault. Both men are locked up tonight in the Luzerne County Prison. Staying in Butler Township this evening, police there have arrested a Carbondale woman in connection with a stolen vehicle that was recovered at the Econo Lodge on North Hunter Highway. Police tell us 25-year-old Stephanie Ware is accused of driving a stolen Ford Explorer and then parking it in the O'Connell Lodge parking lot on September 23rd. Ware was told to leave the car there by this man, Lee Sokolowski. He is a suspect in a number of bank robberies and stolen vehicles. Ware was told to wipe the car down to destroy any evidence. Ware has been charged with receiving stolen property and criminal conspiracy along with other charges. She was arraigned on all the charges and sent to the Luzerne County Prison, where she's locked up tonight under $250,000 bail. A Plymouth man learned his fate today for his involvement in a fatal road rage incident. 23-year-old Lorenzo Burgos struck and killed Fred Kleeman, who had yelled at him to slow down last August on Nottingham Street in Plymouth. Burgos told police that he hit the gas towards Kleeman, but intended to come to a quick stop. He pled guilty to a third-degree murder charge and to two counts of reckless endangerment. Luzerne County Judge Tina Polchek gartley sentenced him to spend the next 10 to 20 years in prison. A lawsuit was filed in federal court last month concerning the purchase of the Huber Breaker. Revia Ashley LLC is accusing Pacello Logistics LLC of stealing money and scrap metal from the site. Revia Ashley is asking for an injunction to stop Pacello Logistics excuse me, from taking anything else from the Huber Breaker. It also wants documentation of all property removed from the site. The company is also seeking $150,000 plus fees and costs. Pacello and Revia Ashley forged a loan agreement in May of 2013.
2013. Pacello bought the property at bankruptcy court in October of 2013. Rivia Ashley put up $1.2 million to Pacello to purchase to complete the purchase. If no settlement is reached between the two companies, a trial is scheduled for July 20th in federal court for the Eastern District of Pennsylvania. Shots rang out in Wilkes-Barre over the weekend and a New York man was arrested by city police. They tell us they were called to a report of shots fired around 6.30 Sunday night. A victim told officers that he was driving his vehicle and was, quote, flipped off by two black males. A male suspect wearing a green hoodie reached into the waistband of, his, of the other suspect and pulled out a handgun. He then fired three shots at the victim. Both men then fled on foot on Howard Street. Police were able to track down and catch 21-year-old Sake Hardy from White Plains, New York. They took him into custody. And the search continues tonight for accused cop killer Eric Freen. And we have learned just a little while ago that police may have spotted the area's most wanted man near a Poconos post office. This comes just a few days after authorities refocused their search efforts in the manhunt after another credible sighting. Friday night, a woman claimed that she saw a man carrying a rifle with mud on his face near Pocono Mountain East High School Friday evening. The school sits very close to the Swiftwater State Police Barracks. Now the Friday sighting moved the search southbound and into the Swiftwater area, Paradise and Pocono Townships. The Pocono Mountain School District canceled all activities at its Swiftwater campus on Sunday. Earlier tonight, a local police officer reported to possibly seeing Freen near the Swiftwater post office. However, Freen was not located. Also, blood found last week on a resident's porch in the area was tested and is not from Freen. A Kingston police officer was charged today with driving under the influence. Officer John Sosnowski and Officer Jonathan Karaniski crashed their ATVs early in the morning on September 29th in Edwardsville. Karanowski was transported to Geisinger Valley Medical Center in Plains Township after his vehicle slammed into a tree. Sosnowski of Ashley appeared to be under the influence and was taken into custody. He was also treated at Geisinger Wyoming Valley Medical Center and released. He was charged with DUI, driving at an unsafe speed, and operating an ATV on the street. A Pennsylvania Supreme Court justice was relieved of his duties. Justice Seamus McCaffrey was relieved on an interim basis of all judicial and administrative responsibilities as a justice. McCaffrey has publicly accepted responsibility for exchanging hundreds of sexually explicit emails with a member of the Attorney General's office. According to a news release, the Judicial Conduct Board will determine if Justice McCaffrey will be removed from the bench permanently. Some good news for motorists who travel Interstate 81 in Schuylkill County. Interstate 81 North from the Delano exit to the McAdoo exit is now open to all traffic. The northbound lanes were open after a year of construction on the bridges that carry the Interstate 81 over some railroad tracks and another roadway. This project is part of a multi-year project to replace or rehab bridges on the interstate on and off ramps along with repaving the interstate itself. No worries when the McAdoo exit will completely reopen. Creatures great and small paid a visit to a group of students in West Hazleton. WYLN's Julie Stefanovich took a trip to the rainforest with the kiddos today. Students at West Hazleton Elementary School got a visit today from some unique and exotic creatures. Although there were no wildcats on hand, children got the chance to come face to face with a variety of mammals, birds, and reptiles. Understanding Wildlife, which is based out of Ohio, rolled into town to present live on stage the rainforest. The mission of the organization is to inspire children to care for the environment. The company travels coast to coast with its message of conservation. And we've got, again, we've got birds, snakes, monkeys, lemurs, alligators, kinkajous. We, we do a fun program. Students love our program, man, and it's so rewarding to us. Back home at the office, we've gotten calls from principals and teachers that will say it's been six weeks since your program was at our school, and the kids are still talking about it like it was yesterday. And, and that's exciting to us because that's our goal. We want the kids to have fun. We want them to realize these animals have personalities. These animals are awesome. And when they get that, that emotional connection, 
now they've got a reason. We tell the kids to recycle. We tell the kids to take care of the environment, but oftentimes they don't know why. And, and, and once they see these animals, they meet these animals, things change a little bit, and the kids really do get excited about getting involved in conservation issues. Principal Pulaski was thrilled to have the organization visit the school. The kids gain a better understanding of the importance of preserving the environment by seeing the animals up close and personal. A lot of them don't get the opportunities to get to see these animals, especially relating to the rainforest. It's really exciting to bring all these outside people into our school to help our students become all around great students. Not just the academics, the social, but to learn about their environment and how they can help to save a lot of these animals and participate. According to Cole Reiser, elementary age is the perfect time to start implementing rainforest conservation. He hopes that the students got a better understanding on how to take care of the environment from today's presentation. In West Hazleton, Ford W. Wyland's Lit Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. Julie, thank you. Well, Sunday, we're going to talk about food, food, and more food at the Health and Wellness Center in Hazel Township. Our Gary Perna has a recap of the very tasty event, just in case you missed it. The 7th Annual Tastes of Greater Hazelton was held this Sunday at the Health and Wellness Center in Hazel Township. There was something for everyone to taste from small finger foods to hoagies and much more. Organizers said all 350 tickets were sold for this event. Many restaurants returned, but there were a few new ones trying it out at the Tastes of Greater Hazelton. We have, we have a lot of different restaurants here. We have restaurants that have been here for seven years, that have uh, come here for seven years. We also have brand new restaurants that joined us this year. Um, uh, this year we have our new restaurants are uh, Theodora's, The Pines, Victoria's, um, Martin's, La Mexicana, and De Pisa. According to Barna, the restaurants bring their signature dishes to the event. Well, all the different restaurants, they have their signature, whatever their signature food is, is what they're bringing here today for us to try. And we would hope that all, these, the, all the people that are attending today will at least participate and go to these different restaurants and uh, patronize them throughout the year. We spoke with two general managers about why they brought their businesses to this event. This is our second year here at the Taste of Greater Hazelton, and uh, we're doing it to showcase, of course, what we have at Giant Foods to offer, but it's also a great way to uh, mingle with the community and with the other businesses here in Hazelton. Uh, we do enjoy it very much, meeting the people, and uh, today we are offering one of our specialties, which is our six-foot hoagies, and they are made to order at Giant Foods for any uh, celebration, holidays, get-togethers, and we're offer also offering a uh, taste of our marinated boneless uh, th chicken thighs, and we have different flavors that we prepare in-house, uh, are there for you to purchase. We, this is our first time here. We just opened in May, and we are very excited to be here, very excited to show our signature pieces and show everyone what we have to offer. We have our infamous Chef Drew's New England clam chowder, uh, pulled, pulled pork sandwiches, and uh, cheesesteak spring rolls. We're very excited to see what we have to offer. They're loving the food, and they're loving seeing Chef Drew. Our Mike Lula talked with two people who came out to the Tastes of Greater Hazelton and why they keep coming for that great tasting food. Um, this is probably either my fifth or sixth year that I've been coming. Um, I love every year. I look forward to it. And I introduced my husband to it last year, and now he loves it too. Uh, what are some of the things that you come down come to a place like this, some of the places you try, after you try some place, have you visited the restaurant? Oh yes, last year we went to the Brass Buckle um, after we saw them here and um, we loved uh, Martin's this year, can't wait to go to their restaurant now after seeing them here this year. Well, the Brass Buckle I liked, I liked uh, the Swedish meatballs from uh, Sand Springs was really good um, and the uh, fajita roll. Uh, where that place was good too. You said it's your second time here. Would you recommend it to anybody else? Uh, yeah, I try to get my parents to come. I try to get my friends to come, but they live kind of far away. But yes, I would recommend it to whoever is in the area. Barnes said all the funds raised at the Taste of Greater Hazelton benefit community programs that the Greater Hazelton Chamber of Commerce put on each and every year. In Hazel Township, for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Gary Perna.
Gary. All right, Gary, thank you so much. Well, we are going to head back outside right now and talk with Joe G once again regarding the weather in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center. Joe, we've got Halloween parades. We've got some apple picking maybe going on and some pumpkin picking. So I'm picking you to give us a good forecast for all those fun fall activities. What do you say? Well, I can try my best to please everybody out there, but we know that doesn't always happen, unfortunately. Uh, but, you know, we do have some rain to talk about once again in our forecast. It's been dry around here lately, although we did get that... Uh significant amount of rain a few days ago five inches of rain almost to be exact in 24 hours some more rain to talk about on radar a couple of showers here and there uh, especially as you make your way out towards central and western pa a couple of uh, locally heavy downpours and as we head through uh, tomorrow especially we'll have to deal with some more showers in our forecast but as always we thank the covered wagon for giving us these wonderful fall decorations. Make sure you check out their location this fall and as we are quickly approaching the winter season. The seven day forecast coming up in just a few. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Why should you choose Penn State Hazleton? We have new scholarship money. There's no application fee. When you visit campus. Opportunities to do research. Students are scoring internships all over the country. You can start here and finish here. Or at another Penn State campus. We have fun. We have the lion. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. We have the largest alumni network in the world. It's your time. Penn State. Penn State lives here. Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. Well, I'll never forget it. One minute, we are talking about going to the movies, and the next, Maggie could barely speak. It was a stroke. I thought I was going to lose her. But I never saw doctors work so fast. Anyway, she's coming home tomorrow. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for killing all the plants. <laughs> Ford, Route 309 in Hazleton and on Route 11 in Exeter. Monday means Plays of the Week, this edition with a heavy dosage of the Crestwood Comets. Crestwood with their highest passing total of the season on Friday against Dallas, and Connor Shalowski helps make that happen. Jay pops and scrambles, launches it, and Shalowski with the outstretched arms secures it with his fingertips for the score. Now on to the Frank Eigeldinger segment of Plays of the Week. You thought he was just a running back, but takes the handoff, and then the beautiful spiral to a wide-open Shalowski who gallops in for another score. Here are a few evaluations of the pass. Well, he made, made me a little nervous there. He hung on to it a little, uh, little long, but uh, you know, he's been on the money all, all year with that pass. Yes, Come on, that Frank, actually at Valley West, we could have had one too. But uh, yeah, Frank, his brother's a quarterback, so he's got a little quarterback in him. So that was a beautiful pass. Eigeldinger back to his bread and butter, runs outside, gets the block from his quarterback, nearly taken down, but he stays up, showcases the speed, finally brought down inside the five yard line. But then he's making plays on defense too. Pass from Matt Harrison complete, out of nowhere, Eigeldinger lays the big hit. Going away from that game, Sean Judge of Wyoming Valley West with some nifty moves of his own. Breaks tackles, count them one, two, three, four, five, and it takes a gang of tacklers to bring him down. 
That's it for Plays of the Week. The Pittsburgh Steelers hoping to make some big plays tonight on Monday Night Football. Pittsburgh hosting the Houston Texans right now. The Steelers have traded wins and losses each week and are coming off a 21-point defeat to the Browns, plus the result from the Wyoming Valley Conference Field Hockey Championship, with district playoffs set to begin on Wednesday. First a reminder, Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacic is next with your upcoming forecast. Stay tuned. Late Edition will be back after the break. Welcome to Fairway Chevrolet, Pennsylvania's number one truck dealer. From the longest lasting, most dependable full-size pickup, the tough all-new Silverado to the rugged 3500 Chevy dump truck, Fairway has your truck. Express cargo van, 2500 utility, 3500 cube, 3500 cube utility with service body, or will upfit any body style to meet your needs. Sales, service, or parts, make no mistake about it, Fairway Chevrolet is Pennsylvania's number one truck dealer. At Gould Supermarket in the Cunningham Valley, we've been helping busy folks with our hot lunches and dinners Monday through Friday for over four years now. We also offer the same entrees and sides as cold heat and eat food seven days a week. Now with the completion of our new state-of-the-art kitchen facility, we've doubled the lunch variety and added a cold salad bar. In addition, we now offer pickup catering. A pamphlet at our deli describes this new service that can drastically reduce your workload and cost for parties or meetings. Always improving. At Gould Supermarket, we live those words. Sometimes things happen, and when they do, visit Harry's You Pull It. With the largest selection of parts and the best pricing, Harry's is the choice for your auto project. Whether it's a hobby or necessity, pull the parts you need for your next auto project at Harry's You Pull It. When you need to work on your car, visit Harry's You Pull It. With locations in Pennsburg, Allentown, and Hazleton. Online at wegotused.com. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? Well, as I said, we are still going to have to deal with some showers across our area going into uh, tomorrow for our Tuesday, maybe a few scattered ones left for our Wednesday and for our Thursday as well. But then by the ending part of the week heading into the weekend, uh, things shaping up to be a little bit nicer. We start to dry things out and a little bit of a uh, gradual warming trend heading in our direction, but nothing substantial. So don't get too excited yet. Well, this is the time of year. Leaves are falling off the trees. Uh, wonderful colors across northeastern and central Pennsylvania, but the rain and the falling leaves can be a not so good thing, if you will, a, a dangerous mix. It clogs a lot of the drains out there, which leads to a little bit of that the flooding that can occur, especially in the poor drainage areas, and also makes uh, the roads a little bit slick as well with those uh, leaves that are in place and the uh, wet conditions. So definitely, uh, leaves are nice to look at when they're on the trees, but when they fall down on the ground, uh, may not be so good of a thing, if you will. 49 degrees are lively, high tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton. And notice those winds generally averaging fairly light, about 5 miles per hour or so. Not too significant out there. Temperature-wise, 52 in Seals Grove, 50 in State College, 56 in Philly, 48 already down in uh, Tawanda. 50 degrees in Mount Pocono, 55, Wilkes-Barre, Scranton International Airport. Up in the Wyoming Valley area from Nanakoke through Wilkes-Barre, Kingston, and Lehman, their temperatures generally holding in the 50s and even a few upper 40s out there already. We got still some uh, showers as you head out towards specifically central and western Pennsylvania. Those are all heading toward the east, so we have to deal with some of that unstable weather as we head through tonight and specifically as we go into tomorrow some showers around 
And then still the possibility of some lingering showers as we go into our Wednesday and as we go into our Thursday and then Friday. We finally start to dry things out and at this point it looks like the weekend should be pretty nice and a little bit of a warming trend as we start going into early next week. Here's a look at our extended forecast, which we want to thank the Pines of Hazleton for sponsoring some showers around for tomorrow, about 55 degrees. And then we're only going to struggle to make it to near 50 for Wednesday and Thursday. We're going to be up to about 55 for Friday and Saturday, and we'll be near 60 as we start going into early next week. So some of those nights have been uh, quite chilly across our area. They have been. I broke down and turned my heat on. I had you to. Finally I broke did. down? I finally. I was waiting until November, but I couldn't. Yeah, I think we all were hoping for that. Oh, well. I just want to point something out so everyone at home doesn't think I like to wear crazy hair. But I have pink in my hair in support of breast cancer awareness. Uh, so if you saw the pink in my hair, that's what the pink streaks are. So I had the pink streaks put in, and the money went to uh, research and helping to find a cure. I was still a good cause. Great cause. Mm -hmm. Yep. Are you going to get yours pink? I'll, I'll go for it. Yeah. All right. Good very cause. Cool. Yeah. I'll do it. Sure. All right. Well, on behalf of all of us here, I don't have much, though, but. <laughs> and I'm Krista Bazinski. Have a good night.